In general, the cost of mining copper is on the rise. We have lower ore grades, the need to mine deeper, as well as a heavy burden of regulatory conditions when creating these mines. There's a revolutionary new electric motor that could eliminate the need for copper, which would mean that these motors would be cheaper, lighter, possibly even more powerful. Now, some of you might say, without copper, what would you be using to conduct the electricity? What if I told you it was one of the most plentiful things on the planet? What if I told you that carbon would be the replacement for copper? Think about all of the things that are composed of carbon, like literally everything on the planet. We got an article over at New Atlas. Radical electric motor runs without metal coils. Really exciting to me. I grew up building RC cars, then moving into using power tools, corded at the time. Now with the innovation of cordless tools over the course of the last decade, and how powerful they've become, the longer run times, they've eliminated a lot of the need for AC power, and cords plugged into a wall or a generator. Maybe this new innovation in electric motors will be the next big leap forward, especially in power tools. They go on to say scientists at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology, or KIST, have developed a new class of lightweight, highly conductive carbon nanotube wiring that does away with copper and aluminum entirely. Using a new process called Lytropic Liquid Crystal Assisted Surface Texturing, LAST, they've created core sheath composite electric cables that don't just conduct electricity, but are flexible and most importantly, are super lightweight. Each CSCEC wire was only about 0.3 millimeter thick, including the insulation. A roughly 256 um conductor core with 10 um sheath to be specific that's about as thick as a business card but still capable of powering a spinning motor so far the cscs have been good enough to replace all the copper in a small electric cnt based motor powering a model car by developing a new concept of cnt high quality technology that has never existed before, we were able to maximize electrical performance of the CNT coils to drive electric motors without metal, said Dr. Day. The trick was the last process. Using lytropic liquid crystals, a phase of matter that flows like a liquid but still has some directional order like a crystal, helps align a separate, otherwise clumped together individual carbon nanotubes. Combined with a chemical rinse, the process also removes metal catalyst impurities created during manufacturing while maintaining the critical one-dimensional nanostructure that makes CNTs so special. The last procedure boosts conductivity over 130%, drops a ton of weight and keeps the performance of the CSCECs stable over time. When it comes to efficiency, battery life, range, and every other metric to go further, faster, and higher, etc., weight matters. Traditional electric motors, while generally significantly lighter than their ICE counterparts, are still relatively heavy. A fair amount of that weight can be attributed to the copper windings in the stators, not to mention all the associated copper wiring in the vehicle's harness. KIST's recent development speaks to electric motors specifically, but one would hope this technology might be applied to general electrical wiring as well. Take BEV, or battery electric vehicle, cars for example, a dual motor Tesla Model S Front motor weighs about 70 pounds, while the rear is about 80 pounds. About 25% of the motor's weight is copper windings. If replaced with CSCEC wi wiring, 
it could bring the overall weight of the front and rear motors down from 150 pounds to plus or minus 115 pounds. It might not seem like a huge amount on a car that's already weighs 4,561 pounds, but you also have to take into the account the lower inertia, less ra- rotating mass means potentially a faster spin up, better throttle response, more efficient torque delivery, and lower mechanical losses. Thermal load would also be lower. So now the cooling system could be made smaller and lighter. It's a cascading effect that only leads to better battery life and longer range. Now they go on to say this is all hypothetical based on actual Tesla figures. However, KIST tested its electric motor between two and three volts at 3.5 watts, significantly lower power figures than any real world electric vehicle bigger than a child's toy. And, and the Reuter goes on to say, but since I'm on a hypothetical tangent, let's go even further for a second. While there's no public data on Joby's actual copper content, I take an educated guess to say it has 200 to 300 pounds of wiring harness for all its redundant systems. It has six motors, each with likely around 30 to 40 pounds of copper windings, totaling 180 to 240 pounds in all. Again, KIST has only talked about electric motor windings at low voltage, but if researchers were able to solve high voltage and general wiring with CSCEC, we're talking about shaving three to 500 pounds from the number one air taxi in the world. I bet if you asked any Joby engineer if they'd like to shed a quarter ton from their Evolve toll, (laughs) they'd probably just stare at you in shock before readily agreeing. Back to the real world, he goes, there are a few other catches and caveats in the research so far. Even after the last process, CNT wiring can't match copper's raw electrical conductivity. For the same physical dimensions and voltages, less current flows through CNT wire, resulting in lower output. In the KIST study, for example, the CNT-based motor topped out at 3,420 RPM, while the copper equivalent hit 18,120 RPM. But the CNT motor's conductor core weighed one-fifth of the copper one. That means its specific rotational velocity, a useful aerospace metric where weight generally matters more than force, was about 6% lower than copper's. So performance per unit weight isn't terribly far behind in that respect. Then there's the cost. Specialized carbon nanotube core sheath composite electric cables can cost upwards of $375 to $500 per kilogram to manufacture versus copper's comparatively tiny $10 to $11 per kilogram. And it's not as though you'd be able to simply swap out copper for CNT tech on existing products. Engineers would have to redesign everything from the ground up to accommodate new types of insulation and winding geometry. Researchers have said that more fine tuning, like optimizing polymer sheaths or aligning CNTs better could boost conductivity, closing the gap with copper even more. Goes on to say, while CNTs can reduce material mass significantly, the manufacturing of them doesn't come without a hefty environmental price tag. Most are still made from fossil fuels in energy hungry processes that generate toxic byproducts we still have to contend with. For example, the last process uses chlorophonic acid and creates hydrochloronic acid in the rinse stage, but is strip mining for copper any better? It does at parts sound promising, although it's in its infancy. But when you start to weigh strip mining with these rinses, we know the impact of strip mining. We don't necessarily know the impact of these rinses. The other thing is, is that are these carbon nanotube windings, are they recyclable? Can we use them over again? Copper can be melted down, used over again, many, many times in many, many different things. But I'll leave it all down to you. Are you excited 
for the exploration of this new electric motor and the promise of potentially some lighter tools, cheaper tools, more powerful tools, even though it might be long off on the horizon. We want to know. Leave it all below. With that, I want to say I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. I thought it was really interesting, and I hope to see you all on the next one.